Hi there, my name is Laura and I work at the Brilliant Club. Today I'm going to talk to you about the things you should consider when choosing your school subjects, especially if you're thinking of applying to university after S5 or S6. I'll mostly be focusing on hires and advanced hires, although the same considerations can be applied if you're thinking about choosing national subjects and also any other qualifications you might want to be taking within your senior phase of secondary school. There will be some tasks to complete along the way to help you to start your research and you'll find these at the link on the video description below. So the aims of this session are to consider the different things you'll think about when making subject choices, particularly within higher and advanced higher subjects. We'll also consider some of the different degree programmes that you could take at university and how your subject choice will impact on those opportunities available to you. As we're going to concentrate mostly on hires and advanced hires, I'll also signpost you to many other resources where you can find out more information about these subjects and other qualifications you might want to take alongside these hires and advanced hire subjects. When you move into S5 and S6, the most traditional types of qualifications to study are hires and advanced hires. These are usually extensions of subjects you'll have studied at National 4 and National 5, and are also the most publicised types of qualifications to enter into college and university. There are, however, many other qualifications that you could choose to study alongside these, including foundation apprenticeships, SPQs and SQA awards. These can also be accepted as part of your entry criteria to get into college and university and can provide you with an excellent way to either accredit learning you're already doing through things like volunteering and leadership positions, or also give you the opportunity to learn more about a subject while also getting some practical experience either at college or within the workforce. As I said before, this session will focus mostly on the hires and advanced hires side of things, but you can find further reading about the other options at the end of this PowerPoint. For now though, let's focus on hires and advanced hires. You may think that you don't need to worry about applying for college, university or jobs for quite some time. However, the subjects you choose now will have an impact on what you are able to do in the future. Therefore, it is important that you research these options thoroughly before you commit yourself to any subjects in particular and make sure you're making the right decision for you and your future. You'll find that there are many people who want to give you advice along the way, whether these be family members, teachers or careers advisors. It's important to take their advice on board. However, what you want to make sure is the decision is the right decision for you and for your future. The first thing I would say is that it's OK to choose the subjects you like. In fact, I would absolutely encourage you to do so. You'll be doing a lot of work on this subject for the next year or maybe two. And so it is important that it's something you're going to enjoy and that you're passionate about. It's also likely that because you enjoy this subject, it's something that you might be interested in studying at college or university. Therefore, getting a good mark within the subject could help you gain entry into a course you'll love, or it can help you to decide whether or not this subject is actually something right for you in the long term. It's important though that you do some research into the subjects and where they can take you before you make any big decisions. For your first task, you're going to look at potential jobs linked to your favourite subjects. Full details of this task can be found on your worksheet, which you'll find a link to in the video description below. The next thing to consider is the subjects that you're good at. Getting the best grades you can is the key objective, and so you want to make sure you're setting yourself up to succeed. You may think that hires and advanced hires are going to be far too hard for you, and it is true that they are a big step up. However, it is a natural progression from the work you've already done so far in these subject areas. For that reason, it is important that you feel confident in the subject and you know what you need to do to get a good mark. Considering subjects you did well in at National 5 is a good starting point. For your next task, you're going to look at the content of the subjects that you're interested in studying and how they are assessed. Full details of the task are on your worksheet. Another thing to think about is whether you already have a particular course in mind that you'd like to study at college or university or a particular career you might want to pursue. 
Some courses and jobs will require you to have certain qualifications in order to gain entry. For example, medicine courses will typically require you to have higher biology and higher chemistry, as well as one out of maths or physics. They could also require you to have two to three advanced hires, which sometimes can be in any subject and sometimes will be restricted to, again, chemistry and biology. If, however, you were interested in studying primary teaching, you would require higher English, but only mathematics at National 5 level. Preferred subjects within primary teaching are sciences and languages, and this is a move to this being compulsory in the future, so it's something worth considering when you are choosing your subjects. If you have a career in mind, then you should also look at whether that has any professional requirements. If we look at the primary teaching example above, these are actually requirements for professional registration, which allows you to practice as a teacher. So if you were thinking of doing some other qualification first and then retraining afterwards, you would still need these subjects in order to start working. For your next task, you'll use the UCAS course search tool to research the questions on your worksheet. You can find the link in the video description below. It's always good to keep your options open. Even if you think you know exactly what you want to do when you leave school, something could happen that makes you want to change your mind. The career you envisage now is probably not the same career you thought you wanted a couple of years ago, and so the same change of heart could happen at any time. Looking at what subjects are required more often can help you with this. Taking a broad range of subjects instead of focusing on one subject area is useful. For example, not taking three science subjects unless you're absolutely sure you definitely want to pursue a science or engineering based course. Having a numeracy and literacy based subject is a good starting point. The most commonly accepted are mathematics and English, although you can sometimes take a science in place of maths and another essay based subject in place of English. Languages and science based subjects also ensure you have a varied skill set that is valuable both when applying for courses and within the world of work. Many courses and careers, however, don't require specific subjects, so don't be too worried about not covering all the bases, but ensuring you have the core subjects will certainly help. Something you should also bear in mind is that there are not many courses in Scottish universities that require advanced hires for entry. However, these can be a good source of preparation for first year study, as they're pitched at the same level and they involve a lot more independent study that is required of you when undertaking a degree. It is important, however, to make sure that you are taking the right subjects at the right levels to gain entry into a course before thinking about studying advanced hires, which, while they'll be attractive to university admissions teams, will not be enough to get you into the course you really want to do if you're missing key subjects at other levels. Now that we have considered what you would need to think about when making subject choices in the senior phase, it's worth having a look at the degree options available out there to, so you can start your research into subjects you might want to study. There are over 37,000 different degree courses available across the UK, which vary from traditional courses, subjects you'll have studied at school, things that you'll have heard of before, but also things that you have never had the chance to try before and may never even have heard of before. In fact, there will be thousands of variations that you'll have never considered. For your next task, look at the degree courses on the right hand side of the screen and have a think about whether they are real or fake. Note down on your worksheet what you think the answers are and then we can go over them together. You should pause the video at the moment and restart when you've written down all your answers. Now that you've written down your guesses, let's go over the answers. Circus and physical performance is in fact a real course. You can study contemporary circus and physical performance at Bath Spa University. House plant care and maintenance, however, is a fake degree. Although while it is not a degree in itself, you might find that some of the rural colleges offer degrees in horticulture, or modules that cover this topic area. Yodeling is actually a real course. This is something that you can study at Lucerne University of Applied Sciences and Arts in Switzerland, the home of yodeling. Tap and hip hop studies is actually a fake degree course. 
However, music courses will often have modules which cover popular music genres, including rap and hip hop, and it will give you the opportunity to explore these a little bit further. Stand up comedy is a real course. This is something you can study at the University of Kent by doing a master's in stand up comedy. Puppetry is also a real course. You can do puppetry design and performance at the Royal Central School of Speech and Drama at the University of London. David Beckham studies. Now this is actually a fake degree. However, it was once offered as a module on sociology, sports science and media studies courses at Staffordshire University. Baking is a real degree course and you can study baking science and technology at London South Bank University, among others. Vegan and vegetarian studies is however fake, although again you will find that modules covering these areas might be covered within hospitality or other cooking related degree programmes. Electronic music and DJ practice is a real course and it can be studied at the University of Central Lancashire. Equestrian psychology is also a real course and can be studied at Nottingham Trent University as part of an equestrian psychology and sports science course. Chimney sweeping and repair, however, our last course is fake. It is not something that you can study at college or university. Here are just a few more courses you can study at university. As you can see, there are so many to choose from and definitely something to suit all tastes and skill sets. And I hope what you've realised from the previous exercise is that there are many courses that you may never even have heard of before that you might want to consider studying at college or university to degree level. As there are so many options, choosing a subject at university can be just as difficult, if not more difficult, than choosing your hires and advanced hires. You can, however, use the same criteria we used above to start narrowing down your options. Remember to think about the fact that you can study something that you've never studied before at school and really specialise in an area that you're passionate about. For example, if you're interested in English, you could study specifically creative writing or linguistics, as opposed to the very general course you may have studied at secondary school. Instead of just studying biology as a whole, you could look at marine biology if you have a particular passion for sea life. Art can mean so much more than just painting if you go to do an art and design course at university and could look specifically at photography, animation or even sculpture. Having an interest in PE could lead to a course in PE teaching or sports coaching, but could also be paired with an interest in science, where you can then use scientific methods and experimentation to analyse performance in sports and exercise science course. Languages can often be paired with other subjects and it allows you to study or work abroad for part of your course. Or you could think about applying your linguistic skills to another language that you wouldn't have had the chance to study at school. For your next task, you're going to do a little bit of research and answer the questions on your worksheet around university prospectuses and degree options. Again, you'll find the link to this worksheet in the description below. There are many resources out there to help you make an informed decision. I've listed the main ones here for your reference, as well as on your worksheet for future use. You'll also see some links to places you can find out more information on other qualifications you may want to consider alongside your hires and advanced hires in S5 and S6. Thank you for listening to this video and I hope that it's helped you to narrow down your S5 and S6 options, as well as give you food for thought on how to go about choosing a university course. We would welcome your feedback, so please let us know if you have any comments regarding this video or have a suggestion for other topics you'd like us to cover by emailing us at hello at thebrilliantclub.org. We wish you the very best of luck in whatever you choose to do when you leave school. Thank you.